Buenos días a todos. Vamos a empezar con la inauguración de este magnífico congreso. Yo soy Araceli Manjón Cabeza, la secretaria general de la universidad, y les saludo en nombre del rector, que aunque hubiese querido venir, le ha sido imposible. Voy a ir dando la palabra a las distintas personas que van a intervenir en la inauguración y al final mmm, les dirigiré yo unas... Unas palabras y daremos por instalado el evento. Tiene la palabra don Eugenio Luján, decano de la Facultad de Filología. Muchas gracias. Dear Secretary General, eh, dear Presidents of the Memory Studies Association, eh, dear Members of the eh, Local Organizing Committee, eh, dear Colleagues, it is uh, uh, really a pleasure and it's an honor for our university to host uh, this four-day conference uh, here, uh, a conference with uh, such a success of participation because uh, I am aware that more than 1,500 people are going to attend uh, this, uh, this conference. Uh, when I first uh, heard about uh, this conference more than one year ago, uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Joanna Vollmeyer, and the other members of the local organizing committee, Francisco Ferrandiz from the National Research Council, Marie Christova uh, from the University of Warwick, and Maria Garcia Alonso from the uh, Universidad Nacional de Educación a Distancia. Uh, they came to my office and told me about the possibility of organizing this uh, conference here at the Complutense University, and specifically uh, at the School of Languages and Literatures, where we are here, at the uh, Faculty of Philology, as we call it, in our university. And I thought that, this was, uh, that it was a very wonderful idea, because I am uh, totally aware that uh, memory uh, studies uh, is an emergent and important field, and it's expected to be even more important in the years to come. Uh, also, I was um, I, I, I like uh, very much the idea because uh, this building is a very special building uh, with a long history and uh, with uh, a lot of things to do with the uh, central subject of your uh, conference. Uh, most of you know, I'm sure, that uh, this year we are commemorating the 88 uh, years uh, after the end of the Spanish Civil War, and this building is. Uh, uh, closely linked to the development of the Spanish Civil War because, in fact, uh, the front line uh, between the, uh, the, the, the two parties that were uh, fighting each other during the Spanish Civil War was in front of this building uh, for uh, many years, uh, almost uh, for the whole duration uh, of, the, of the war. In fact, uh, the, the front line was between this building and the uh, School of Law that is just uh, across the gardens, and uh, the front was there, uh, as I was saying, uh, for a long time. Uh, therefore, uh, we have uh, uh, memories and uh, we have the, still uh, the scars of, uh, of the Spanish Civil War in uh, the building. Uh, and in some of the books, um, uh, we still have the ballots uh, that are inside of the books or uh, we have the holes uh, of the ballots uh, in the books because uh, they were used uh, to put them on the windows to prevent the ballots from coming inside. It was, uh, uh, we, we must be thankful uh, to some of the librarians of the time because they were able to replace uh, at least most of the uh, valuable, uh, the most valuable uh, books of our, of our collection uh, by Sachs, uh, and they convinced uh, uh, the soldiers to replace the books, and so they were able to preserve them and keep uh, our uh, memory and keep uh, our um, cultural heritage uh, uh, intact as far as they were able to do so. On the other hand, I would also like to point that uh, this uh, building um, uh, has a connection uh, with the revolts that took place uh, in the late uh, 60s and in the early 70s uh, during, uh, during Franco's uh, regime, and these revolts marked also at the beginning of the end of that regime. Uh, when you go out of this uh, auditorium, uh, you will be in the lobby of the, of the school, uh, of, in the lobby of the building, and uh, you will see a podium 
and from that podium, uh, uh, some, uh, uh, some important speeches uh, were delivered both by university professors and by uh, students. And uh, those speeches were the basis uh, for uh, this change, for bringing uh, about uh, these uh, revolts. And uh, this was uh, the place where some, of, um, some important demonstration, uh, demonstrations started uh, that were crucial uh, for uh, saying at that time, uh, at the end of Franco's regime, that people uh, really wanted to change and wanted Spain to be a democracy. I could be uh, speaking for a long time uh, about uh, the building because, uh, uh, as you are seeing, uh, it has a, a very long, a very long uh, history. Going back uh, again to the times of the Civil War, I would like to mention, because uh, um, you come from many different countries, uh, I would like to mention that uh, this was uh, the general quarters of the international brigades that came uh, to Spain in order to support the Republican government against uh, uh, Franco's uh, army. Uh, so, uh, we have interesting descriptions uh, of the Spanish Civil War and of the building itself uh, in the writings uh, of several uh, important uh, writers uh, from, from different European and also uh, European countries and also from America uh, because they were fighting here uh, for freedom, for democracy and uh, for, the, for the Spanish Republic. And uh, again, uh, this uh, building has been crucial uh, for Spanish um, culture and for Spanish education. In fact, uh, when you go out, uh, you also uh, may notice that we have uh, on the corridor uh, leading from this auditorium to the, to the lobby of the, of the school, you may notice that uh, we have some uh, photographs of the uh, first inauguration of the building. Uh, the building was uh, one of the most important projects of the um, Republican uh, government uh, in, the, uh, in the 30s uh, of the last century. And uh, they wanted to uh, build it as the flagship of, of Spanish culture and in order to promote Spanish culture. In fact, uh, the building was designed to uh, bring uh, to the teaching uh, of humanities in Spain a new phase and a, a change in the methods and the ways uh, that humanities were uh, taught. Uh, this uh, uh, scenario where we are sitting now, in fact, uh, was uh, designed so that um, um, performances could take place here. And in fact, the idea was that the first, the, the first performance uh, to take place here uh, was supposed to be uh, uh, performed by uh, Federico García Lorca's uh, group, La Barraca. In the end, it wasn't so because the building uh, the, was, uh, the, the finishing of the building was a bit delayed, but uh, the idea was that it should be a uh, use uh, for that group and some of the representations uh, of the group took uh, place uh, here. Um, just uh, to finish, I, I would like to, to ask you, uh, when you go out of the auditorium and go into the lobby, uh, to take a moment to look at the uh, magnificent uh, stained glass window that we have uh, in the lobby. I would like you to look at it uh, because um, it is a unique symbol of the spirit uh, with which uh, this uh, building was uh, built. Um, uh, it is a, a very interesting modernist uh, a window. Um, it was made by one of the most important um, uh, um, houses that produced uh, stained glass windows at the time, Montmeillan, uh, and it was, it was destroyed during the, the Civil War. But uh, we were able uh, to build it anew uh, when we were commemorating the 75 years uh, of, the, of the building. And if you uh, have a look at it, you will notice that there are symbols and images of a, a, a lot of different cultures of the world. You will see that there are some motifs that uh, reminds, uh, remind us of uh, the pre-Hispanic uh, cultures of America. You will see symbols of ancient Egypt. You will see symbols of medieval uh, Europe, uh, of ancient Rome. And also, you will notice uh, that there is a, a, Muslim, a Muslim in prayer. This is uh, especially significant because uh, if we are thinking of a country uh, such as Spain in the 30s, it was a Catholic country, and it was, I would dare to say, almost provocative to put that image uh, there. But uh, the idea was uh, to, um, um, to uh, say uh, from a 
from, uh, from, from those images that this faculty, by, uh, at that time was the Faculty of Humanities, uh, the idea that this faculty was opening to the knowledge of all the different culture, cultures in the world. So I think that's important uh, to be aware of uh, in this conference because um, uh, memory studies uh, are, is indeed a, um, a transdisciplinary field. I didn't want to use the, the word multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary because I think it's more than that. It's trans, transdisciplinary uh, because it brings together and bridges uh, different disciplines such as anthropology, sociology, history, and so on. And I would like to add to those disciplines also philology. Philology in the sense, and I'm thinking now uh, of Edouard Said's uh, rereading of uh, Auerbach uh, about the idea of Einfühlung, uh, the idea that philology and the interpretation of texts uh, is a very powerful hermeneutic uh, tool in order to know other cultures, in order to understand other cultures from inside. So uh, I think that this was a very appropriate place uh, to organize uh, this uh, conference. I would like to thank the presidents of the Memory uh, Studies Association, uh, Jeffrey Olig, uh, Aline Sierp, and Jenny Bustenberg. And especially, I would like also to mention the Madrid Organizing Committee. I already uh, read their names before because I, I am aware that they have made, made a very uh, uh, an extraordinary uh, work, and this is why we can be here at this opening ceremony. So again, uh, welcome uh, to our uh, university, welcome to our faculty, and I wish you a very successful and fruitful conference during these four days uh, here in Madrid. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, decano. Tiene la palabra Jenny Bostenberg de la Asociación de Estudios de la Memoria. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. Um, we have a whole section of thank yous later on, so I will leave it for a little bit later. But uh, I, I just wanted to start off by also welcoming everybody uh, to Madrid, uh, even though it's not my city. Um, but from, from the MSA to give you a, um, an official and formal welcome after our beginning last night. Um, we just want to start off by giving you a little bit of information about the Memory Studies Association since, uh, and this is very exciting, we have grown so much that a lot of you will not have been to one of our conferences before. We're only two and a half years old. So in 2016, our first conference was um, 200 people, and that was already much bigger than we had expected that year. So we grew so fast. This year, um, we are expecting 1,500 people, and we're very, very excited and a little bit nervous, and, um, uh, but more than anything, just really happy um, to have you all here. Um, I, I won't go into uh, more information about the association right now because uh, on Thursday, um, no, on Friday, sorry, on Friday at 9 o'clock uh, here in this building, we have our members meeting and there we will really explain how we evolved and how you can get involved and, um, you know, everything you want to know about the association. So I'm not, not going to uh, go into that right now but just to really encourage you to come because of course we would like you to be involved. The other thing I wanna mention right now is that uh, one thing that we're very pleased about is that uh, we've not only grown as an association, but we've had lots of people become involved as working group um, chairs and members. So we have now 14 working groups on different topics and uh, six regional groups. Um, and so if you are a member of one of these groups, you can get one of these buttons. Or if you're a member of more than one group, you can get lots of buttons. If you're not a member yet, but you would like to become a member, you also can get a button. Then we would just like you to sign up. There's a form online where you can do that. Um, yeah, and we just really encourage you to get involved. And if there's a group that you would like to have, but it doesn't exist yet, then we would like you to make one, found it. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that uh, at the very end of the conference, it's worth staying until the very end because our last event uh, will uh, feature the first, very first award of our MSA Book Award um, that we uh, are giving out in cooperation with Sage, um, Sage Publishers and the Memory Studies Journal. 
Um, and this year, uh, Catherine Gilbert is getting the award, and we have a whole interesting event around um, the 25th anniversary of the genocide that took place in Rwanda, um, and uh, also a, a documentary that goes along with that. So please stay till the end. Um, and the last thing I will mention before I hand over um, to Jeff is um, that we are also handing out for the first time an, an award for the best uh, paper given at the conference by a graduate student, PhD student, MA student. Um, so if you are chairing a panel or if you're just in a panel and you see a great paper, please send us an email. Um, because that paper will then uh, be featured in the Memory Studies Journal, and you know we hope to really highlight some of the younger scholars that are here as well. Um, sh do you want to take over, and then I will show a little video from our co-president Aline, who unfortunately can't be here today, uh, but she's made a little video, so I'll cue that up while you take over. Uh, so I want to add my thanks uh, to the University Complutense and especially to our dear, dear colleagues on the local organizing team. Uh, uh, it's been a fantastic process working together and getting to know them uh, better, uh, and the MSA is incredibly grateful. That being said, I want to emphasize something that Jenny also said uh, or indicated is that the MSA is not just a conference organizing entity. Uh, the MSA hopes to be the intellectual home uh, for memory studies scholars uh, across the disciplines and around the world. And so we hope that you not only use the tools that we've developed so far, um, discussion boards, the website, uh, the working groups, and the like, uh, but that if you have ideas for how we can do more in that way uh, to encourage um, uh, scholarly exchange, intellectual debate, uh, and colleagueship, um, please let us know. Uh, more than let us know, please just do it. Um, uh, we're, we're doing the best we can on all of these different fronts. We are learning how to do things like make apps and design websites and uh, order coffee and things like that, which aren't part of our professional training. Uh, so we're Welcome. happy to have people. Welcome who... to the third annual conference of the Memory Center. Whoops. Okay. Uh, there's Eileen. Uh, she will be in a, in, in a moment. Um, uh, so please get involved. Please help us do this uh, important work. Um, I want to say a few words about a couple of ways in which this work is, in fact, so important. Uh, the first is a statistic that was just uh, disseminated in the last couple of days, which is about the journal Memory Studies. Many of you, all of you, I think, know the journal Memory Studies. As members of the association, you have free access to it through the website. Uh, one of the things we've done in the last year is we've concluded an arrangement with SAGE and the editors of Memory Studies to increase from four to six volumes a year. One of those volumes will be a special issue edited out of this conference uh, uh, with papers from the conference or in response to a call uh, from people who presented at the conference. Um, the statistic, I don't put all that much weight except when it's a really good statistic, and this one is, so if it's a good one, I accept it. If it's a bad one, I explain it away. Uh, the good statistics is that memory studies in terms of impact factor is now the number one history journal in the world. Okay, that's, I, I'm, it's sort of stunning. I don't quite understand how impact factors work, uh, but this is um, uh, kudos to uh, uh, the editorial uh, team of memory studies. Uh, but I hope to some extent it's a reflection of the interest that there is out there in memory studies and the work that we've been doing here. Substantially more important and substantially less happy uh, is another issue that I'd like to talk about. Some of you may have seen, some of you may have read about a solidarity statement that we issued on the website for our Turkish colleagues uh, who um, uh, are either under the threat of prosecution or who have already been prosecuted, convicted, and sentenced uh, for the atrocious crime of signing a petition in favor of human rights. Uh, it is exceptionally important that we as an association stand against this kind of persecution. Uh, I am extraordinarily happy to say, however, uh, that at least two of the people who have been convicted 
for signing this petition uh, are in the room today. Uh, and I'd actually like to invite them up to the stage. Aisha and Nil, could you come up and uh, talk? <laughs> Do you have a microphone? Maybe you can sit and, and talk about it just because this is a microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Or, uh, I don't want to take your attention. Oh, please. It's just yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to take thank to Memory Studies Association because it was very valuable for us. Uh, me and Ayşe Gül are uh, two members of the Academics for Peace uh, from Turkey who signed uh, the peace petition, as uh, Jeff put it, and we were in total 2,212 uh, academics. And when you think about the, uh, as we are all academics here, uh, when we think about the motivation that we sign, and it's not easy for us to sign anything easily, but I mean, we need the urge and the, the uh, necessity to do it. But then uh, it comes with the consequences. So uh, we are, uh, there are court cases uh, against many of us. Um, and uh, they are opening, I'm rap uh, rapidly as well. And two of our friends um, are already in uh, prison. Uh, if professor Füsun Üstel, uh, she's a retired professor from Galatasaray University in Turkey. And Professor Tuna Altınel uh, was a professor from uh, Lyon University in France. And uh, 35 of our friends, including uh, Ayşe Gül, are also uh, unfortunately getting uh, sentences who may, uh, hopefully not, but may uh, end up in uh, j jail. I was lucky to have t 22 months, for instance, and I'm not going to be jailed if I'm not going to do the same crime of demanding peace. So you can see how arbitrary and uh, things are and how values have changed in Turkey and as we know all around the world. So uh, when we were talking with Ayşe Gül and also uh, when we are doing this activism thing, we uh, realized that the institutional support is very important. So once again, thank you very much to Memory Studies Association. So it would be great. I mean, individual petitions are good, but institutional supports uh, are very important to, from institutions to institutions, especially when you ha develop academic relations with the universities in Turkey, because there's a huge purge in Turkey and it, with the, uh, the uh, persecution of, uh, of more than around 8,000 academics. So uh, the institutional support is important and putting pressure on the states, your own states, while developing relations with Turkey is important and you want to add something, yeah. I should go? Yeah, yeah. Something that maybe you want to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, uh, we, I'd like to, we'd like to invite you to the photo session at the end of this, okay. our, when? At the, in, during the first break. During the first it's break. So not right in front of the, the yeah, in front of the break. building, right? Yeah. 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 And uh, it would be great if any of you who'd like to be part of the photo session, so we'll carry on our institutional solidarity with our friends in jail and prevent make them release, and then prevent other friends to uh, end up in prison. Thank you very much. I would also just like to personally thank uh, the Memory Studies Association for the swift response that they had. Uh, to our sentencing. I was sentenced to 25 months a few weeks ago and I know that among the people attending this conference there are a few others who have uh, imprisonment sentences. We have appealed to the upper court. Uh, depending on the upper court's decision, we may all uh, end up in prison. Many of our friends uh, have been exiled. Uh, they uh, teach at universities um, in Europe and in other parts of the world. Uh, and many of our friends have been um, uh, deprived of their passports, they cannot even travel. So although I have an imprisonment sentence, I at least have the privilege of working at a university that has an academic freedom statement that supports my research and I still have a passport and I'm here today. And it's really a privilege and a great honor to be here. Uh, I was reading a post today about um, the um, workers of a company that are selling stuff to the detention centers in the US doing a walkout uh, today as an act. And it was described, uh, the post said, uh, described solidarity as a verb, and I find that to be a really beautiful depiction. I think solidarity is indeed a beautiful act. 
it's a life enhancing act, it's a hope enhancing act, and uh, we feel um, under a shower of support and solidarity from all of you, and the MSA's re response uh, has really been uh, an amazing one. Uh, so thank you all for your solidarity. And um, this is a time, I think, uh, that we're all experiencing a lot of problems in terms of academic freedom. Perhaps Turkey is experiencing it in the extremes. Um, so it feels as if we need to develop new tools to address academic freedom and to develop new creative means of uh, not only acting in solidarity, but uh, enabling research and enabling collaboration in new forms. And that's exactly what I guess we'll be doing in the next few days. Thank you again so much for this opportunity you. and for your great solidarity. So just to repeat, during the first coffee break today, in front of this building, everybody who wants to can be part of a big photo that we will um, send to those, um, to those affected, but also, of course, to the pub public so that we can... Um, you know, have more of an impact. Okay. Um, is, this, is this on? Oh. Hello? Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, so we've barely begun here in Madrid, but I've been asked to say a few words about next year. Uh, and uh, you are all invited to the 2020 meeting of the Memory Studies Association, which will take place in uh, the place I live, uh, namely Charlottesville, Virginia, uh, which, as many of you know, has been the site or the epicenter of new American debates over memory. Uh, one of the things, we have a session uh, later today on American exceptionalism. One of the things that's happened in Charlottesville and through Charlottesville uh, is a fairly radical transformation in public discourse about memory so that the United States is now involved in the memory debates which many countries elsewhere in the world have been experiencing for decades. So we thought it would be an interesting place uh, to have a, con uh, a conference. Um, uh, we do understand and we appreciate and we uh, are very concerned about the fact that having a conference outside of Europe will make it very difficult for many of our European colleagues uh, to attend. Um, all we can say is that we've given this a lot of, a lot of anxiety has gone into these kinds of decisions. Uh, but it's very important that the Memory Studies Association be a truly international association, which means moving around. Um, uh, it means being on different continents, it means being in different languages, uh, it means uh, getting on airplanes and traveling. Some of us can do that, some of us cannot. We are constantly working on ways to find funding. We hope that each of you is working on ways to find funding. Um, so we do anticipate it will be a somewhat smaller conference uh, than, um, uh, uh, than this year's, but we will be back in Europe in 2021. Can I? Uh, the 2021 conference will be in Warsaw, so that will likely be easier uh, for many of you. Well, it's easier for many, uh, it's harder for some. Uh, so we're trying to thread the needle here uh, and be fair and be ecumenical um, uh, and um, uh, make sure that the discourse of memory studies is as inclusive as possible. Anyway, next year in Charlottesville, uh, uh, it's going to be interesting because next year people People are going to complain the rooms are too cold. <laughs> um, I actually wanted to say just a very brief word about it, uh, about the weather. It is going to be very, very hot over the next couple of days. So all standard conference protocols are hereby suspended. If you want to show up in shorts and a dirty t-shirt, uh, that is, I ha look, I have a tie and a jacket in my bag, which I was going to wear. Let's, let's not. Um, please move slowly. Please drink a lot of water. Um, uh, but um, uh, keep that all in mind. Shall we play just a brief video, uh, Aileen, as, well, you'll see. Just p play. We miss you, Aileen. She's live streaming. Well, 
while we're working that out, uh, uh, just a couple of notes. Uh, I want to, uh, we need to read a, a, or make an important statement um, uh, that the sessions are being recorded. Uh, and so, like most organizations, we consider your registration tacit legal consent uh, for that to happen. Just be aware, and if you do not want your photograph used or uh, your words distributed, please let us know and we will do our best uh, to make sure that that doesn't happen. Bueno, en lo que se solventa el problema técnico, tiene la palabra Francisco Ferrandis del CSIC. ¿Segundos? ¿Me puedes escuchar? Sí, sí. Ok. I am, well, well please uh, welcome everybody from the local organizing committee. Uh, we didn't expect this heat wave, as, uh, as Jeff was, but uh, it's all over Europe, so that's, <laughs> so uh, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, we, were, we will try to make it, you know, as, as comfortable for you as, as possible, no? When I, a year and a half, when the MSA uh, uh, told us if we could, could organize this conference, we said yes, but ent enthusiastically, and then this thing grew so big that, as, that you can see that we are a bit overwhelmed here, so just bear with us if you have a, I mean, if something doesn't work, it's because it's just four of us, and then all the volunteers, and then many, many people involved, but uh, it is a huge conference for non-professionals like, uh, like us. So um, one of the, of the things uh, we, we, we thought that was uh, important is uh, uh, the two former conferences were done in Central Northern Europe, and we wanted to bring it to the South, and that was, I think it was a good decision. And then we have the, the Dean, who, who took us immediately and has helped us immensely with uh, with every, every detail, every problem that, that would come up. Um, we also thought that this was a, a good opportunity to try to put together different memory, memory, tradition, memory traditions in the world. For example, uh, it's easier for Latin American scholars to come to, to, to Spain, and we have a lot of Latin American scholars, and uh, sometimes uh, they, they, they don't have the opportunities of getting together with uh, English-speaking kind of, uh, um, speaking, English-speaking world. So this is uh, very, very, very important also for, uh, for us. Also, as, uh, as the Dean has mentioned, this is the 18th anniversary of the Spanish Civil War, the 18th anniversary of the Spanish exile, which is also extremely important. We will have sessions, specific sessions on this. And uh, that, that happened just by chance. I mean, it was not that uh, it was um, very well designed. It just happened. And then we have this building that was supposed to be here. But this is the building that, uh, that uh, this is the, 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 the way it looked. This building looked in 19, 1939, right after, right after the war. No? And I, I just very briefly, because we are very light, late on schedule, I just wanted to say that one of the things, I am a social, social anthropologist, and one of the things that uh, we wanted to do with this conference is that uh, uh, help opening up the field of memory study to, to memory studies to non-Western epistemologies of the past, because we think the past uh, here in the West, no? we, we think of the past in a broad sense. No? We think of the past in linear ways, there is a past, there is a future, we live in, in the moment and whatnot, but some other cultures around the world don't have the same, the same way of getting to the past. They don't have historians, they don't have uh, the experts we have, they don't have the institutions we have, they don't have the associations we have. No? So this is also a, a, a keynote on co connecting memory traditions around the world that I think is very interesting and we hope that this is one of the additions that uh, Madrid uh, offers not to the field of memory, memory studies. And with this, I'll, I go to my session. That's the start. I started five minutes ago, and uh, <laughs> see you around. And if you need anything, we are here for you. It's not over yet. <laughs> Please stay. Seguimos con nuestra. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. I will also be very short since time is running out. I was going to say a little bit about the program, which um, is so beautifully designed by uh, Jimena Diaz Ocon, who is here, uh, to look at everything she was thinking of these these months, while well, we, we asked her for more and more and more things. 
Um, it's a really dense program, so I can't really highlight everything. It would be rather impossible. So um, you already enjoyed the first keynote yesterday with Alaida Asman, those who could. Um, today, uh, we decided, since we are many, many people and we don't, don't have access to the large uh, venue that we will start using from tomorrow, so we will have three parallel key sessions, which Paco already run to, to start organizing one of those. So one will be here, one will be in the D building, and one will be in a building even more down. Um, we'll have a keynote a round table, which Paco already mentioned, on connecting memory traditions around the world. And then in the evening tomorrow, we will have Vietan Viet Nguyen um, uh, from the University of Southern California, which we are really excited to, to be able to invite to this conference. And uh, the closing uh, plenary session, uh, Jenny already said something about, so I will, I will just um, leave that. Um, what is important uh, to know about the program is that there are many things happening at the same time. We have uh, in total 248 parallel uh, panels and 23 round tables. Um, those who are bilingual, they have whispered translation. Uh, so we hope to help you with the exchange between a little bit too two cultures of memory studies. Um, we have the poster sessions, we have a film festival, there's an arts program, um, and we have marked uh, during all these parallel sessions, uh, special sessions, which are uh, invited sessions, which we wanted to like to, I don't know, highlight in, in, this, in this meeting. So there are conversations with important scholars, there are special sessions on memory work, which is done in Spain, which we would like to share with all of you. And uh, there are uh, sessions on memory activism, on careers, and, uh, and so on. Um, and then during the lunch, uh, we have invited uh, two uh, artists. Uh, today, there will be an invited theater performance by Miko Mikon. And tomorrow there will be an invited performance uh, by Joana Cravedo. Both uh, sessions will be here, so you can grab your lunch, eat it, and then come and see it. Eat, or first come and see uh, theater and then go to lunch. Um, and on Friday we will have a visit to the Civil War campus trenches here at the campus, which you can do at lunch. So that is basically, in a nutshell, this huge uh, program. Uh, if you have any questions, there are the volunteers. We are here. You have the app. I hope all these things, they help you to navigate this huge thing <laughs> to a certain extent. Um, so uh, that's all from me. Thank you very much for being here. I'm really excited to see you all. Tiene la palabra Johanna Balmayer. Thank you very much. You can hear me, right, don't you? Okay. Uh, thank you very much to the Secretary General to be here this morning, also to the Dean. My special thanks to the Dean for this generosity and your help throughout the whole throughout the whole preparation period of this conference. It was so valuable because without this, it couldn't be possible to to well take take place this event here to, today. Um, also, I want to thank again, just as I did yesterday, to the administration office. They had really helped us very much uh, in all this preparation period and we had an excellent cooperation and also thank you very much to the colleagues from the audiovisual department especially to Israel Drobla, Francisco Munoz and Jose Victor Lopez who are in charge of the streaming so that uh, everything runs hopefully smoothly during the conference and um, that you'll be able to see all the conference in the different places, have simultaneous translations and all the technical needs also in the different rooms will be covered by them. Um, um, then I also want to thank um, other people who are working more in the background and are not seen that much, but that are very, very important for such a big event. And um, as you know, the conference has two official languages, Spanish and English. And I want to thank the outstanding professional simultaneous uh, interpreters who are working here. But as you know, we also offer simultaneous translations also for the special sessions in the D building and the whispered translation, just as Maria has uh, mentioned it for bilingual sessions. And this will be, be done by students, master and a bachelor students of translations from this university and the Universidad Pontificia de Comillas. 
And um, thanks again to all the panelists who have sent their abstracts in before, so it will really make their work a little bit easier. Um, but keep in mind, they are still students, they are still in, on training, and they try to practice what they've learned. So yeah, <laughs> just keep this in mind. Yeah? But we are happy to offer this extra, let's say, and hope that this will yeah, uh, facilitate a better exchange between Spanish and English-speaking academics. Um, let me point out that these students are not the only volunteers here. We have more than 40 volunteers supporting us throughout the conference, and it's very, very important that they're here. Um, most of them are from this university and the UNED, um, but they are also um, family members and friends and whoever could give us a helping hand. Uh, I only want to, to mention very briefly Paula Adono, Fatima Dijamu, and Nico Chancellor, who are like the heads of the, of the volunteers coordinating them. They have done an incredible work before. And um, also the interns from Aline Siep, Lorena Ortiz, Laura Brewer, and Lorraine Besnier, who have done also incredible work before uh, this conference started and are helping with, uh, us here in Madrid too. Um, I also want to thank very briefly uh, the head of the catering service, Jose Diaz Anthony, um, because he has done like really a logistical masterstroke during these last weeks. And um, yeah, this is very important. Um, last but not least, I would like to mention my colleagues from Travel Travelbox. Together, we have developed countless organizational aspects and details of this conference that needed to be considered. And um, so I'm very pleased that and want to point out that apart from catering for more than 1,500 people, we have the translation, we have an excursion to the Valley of the Fallen, we have all technical and technological aspects covered here. And we also, and that was initially the idea of Jenny Wüstenberg, we can offer a childcare service for all interested participants. Um, so we try to give an example how it could be possible to reconcile family and working life. So in short, I would like to thank all of those who work in the background, because without you, um, such a big event wouldn't be possible. And um, it's largely in, in visible work, um, and it, it makes itself felt at best by the fact that you will not notice anything, but that everything runs smoothly. Um, but we should not forget what a great effort this means and um, how valuable this work is. Only a few practical uh, informations. As you know, we have another few keynotes that will take place at the Fundación Pablo VI, which is only 10 minutes walk from here. There's a map in the entrance. There are signs that guide you there. There will be volunteers on the way that will guide you there. But uh, there fit more or less 800 people in there. We will video stream all keynotes to this place here and again to the D building with air conditioning and with simultaneous translation. Um, um, we also have the, the app. I want to rem remind you, if you cannot be uh, where the keynote speakers themselves are, we have the app with channels for the keynote sessions, so the ca you can ask your questions or comment on them anyhow, because they will receive it there. Um, and, um, yeah, I think I said everything. Ah, yeah, and we have this... Uh, the lunch will be provided in the cafeteria, which is downstairs. We have different points where you can get your lunch package. There will be a special pickup point for vegetarians or people with food intolerances, just for you to know that. that it's free. And it's free, exactly. <laughs> Coffee and lunch is for free. <laughs> and um, on one last thing. Don't get confused here right now. We are in the first floor in this building, even if you, it should, should be ground floor, actually. But it's first floor. Um, and to, bit it, to make it a little bit more confusing, left and right wing of this building in the third and fourth floor not connected. Whenever you want to go from one side to each other, you have to go downstairs and then upstairs again. So with this heat, it's very good to do a little bit more exercise. Okay, <laughs> now I wish you all of us um, that everything runs as smoothly as we have Im imagined. And I want to welcome you again. And thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Gracias. So, Tiene la palabra María García Alonso de la UNED. Gracias. Yo oh, os voy a dar la bienvenida en español por parte de, del comité local, no solamente a, a este congreso, sino también a la ciudad de Madrid. Comentar solamente unas pocas cosas que complementan lo que se ha dicho aquí en esta mesa. Este edificio no solamente fue la sede de las brigadas internacionales, sino que unos años antes fue el primer sitio donde las mujeres pudieron estudiar en la universidad. Y también me gustaría recordar este lugar de memoria como un lugar de, de acceso de, de las mujeres a, lo que, vamos, a, a, a la universidad. Por otro lado, es un, 
un congreso abierto al sur, como se ha comentado antes, eh, España es una puerta hacia América Latina, pero también eh, una puerta hacia África, incluso tenemos eh, bastantes personas que han venido de Oceanía. Y no querría terminar tampoco sin recordar a tantas personas, tantos académicos en América Latina que también están eh, siendo encarcelados, incluso asesinados en Brasil o en Colombia. Y me parece que un, un evento como este no podía dejar de recordar a otros colegas como nosotros que trabajan en lo mismo y se ven ahora mismo en unas situaciones muy complicadas. Muchas gracias y dejo ya la palabra a la secretaria general para la clausura. Um, we are running low on time, so instead of doing our comprehensive thank you to everybody, we want to do this properly, so we will do it um, at another event, but we really want to thank everybody who's involved in a, in a way that's, you know, proper, so instead of rushing it now, we'll do it later. So we will um, end with Aline's video, and then uh, everybody can go to the sessions. We've told them not to start until we're done, so hopefully they won't actually start. So I will play Aline's video. Short. It's very short. Welcome. Welcome to the third annual conference of the Memory Studies Association. Many of you know me. I'm Aline Zerb. I'm the co-founder and one of the co-presidents of the Memory Studies Association. You've probably seen me on many of the emails, some of you I know in person. And it's very difficult for me to send you this video message and not being able to be in Madrid to welcome you on stage, to welcome you personally. The reason for this is actually a very joyful one I'm going to show you. I'm very close to giving birth. Um, I'm expecting my first child in the next weeks and I was simply not allowed and able to travel anymore to Madrid. I hope uh, that I can follow a lot of the sessions uh, digitally via Skype. Two of my students are walking around with uh, a tablet so they can connect me via Skype. I'm going to uh, connect via streaming as well, so I hope that at least I get a bit of a flavor of how the conference is, uh, is evolving. It's been very difficult to work on this for one and a half years. It feels a little bit like planting an apple tree, uh, tending it, watering it, seeing it grow. Um, harvesting the apples and then not being able to eat the apple pie that you make with the apples. Um, however, I really, really hope that you will have a great conference. Um, please enjoy the next three days. Um, I'll, I'll be with you in my thoughts if you so want. And just enjoy the conference also for me. Thank you very much. un poquito mal de tiempo eh, si sí quiero agradecer a todos los organizadores el que primero el que hayan hecho este congreso que me da la impresión de que debe ser el más grande del planeta hasta la fecha sobre la, la materia y sobre todo que hayan querido ubicarlo y albergarlo aquí en, en la universidad complutense y más y me en este edificio que es heredero del, del histórico y del que ya encierra memoria eh, he podido ver que desde luego el, los conceptos de memoria que se van a manejar en el Congreso desbordan el clásico de memoria histórica en el que probablemente en algunos lugares, en España sin lugar a dudas, estamos anclados, pero estamos anclados porque no lo hemos resuelto, ¿eh? porque han pasado 80 años desde el fin de la guerra civil y han pasado 44 desde la muerte del dictador y desgraciadamente... Eh, si quitamos la parte de la transición a la democracia, pero en todo lo demás pues eh, va ganando el olvido sobre la memoria ¿eh? y acabará ganando por razones mm, físicas o dicho de otra manera, en España todavía tenemos que reflexionar sobre esta memoria histórica que no hemos sido capaces de construir a pesar del tiempo que ha pasado y a pesar del tiempo que ha pasado Resulta que España es el segundo país del planeta con más desaparecidos después de Camboya. Tenemos este gran honor. Eh, aquí no hubo reparación completa, aquí no ha habido justicia, eh, no se ha construido memoria colectiva, ¿eh? el olvido ha ido ganando, eh, hemos tenido que poner a veces las esperanzas 
en jurisdicción universal en Argentina, dices, pero bueno, ¿esto qué es? O sea, las víctimas eran españolas, los victimarios eran españoles, el lugar de comisión de los delitos fue España, ¿cómo que nos tenemos que ir a Argentina? Entonces, bueno, estamos en una situación donde para nosotros todavía esto es un tema que es que no hemos sido capaces de resolver. No se han anulado las sentencias, no se ha reconocido el exilio. Y si quieren algo más visual, eh, bueno, eh, la ciudad universitaria empieza donde hay un arco, que sí, que ahora se llama Arco de la Concordia, pero que es un arco del triunfo, eh, es el único arco del triunfo en un frente de guerra que queda en Europa, es algo muy, muy llamativo y no está resignificado todavía, pero es que todavía tenemos un mausoleo al dictador, y ni tan siquiera con métodos legales estamos siendo capaces de acabar con ello. Por eso quiero celebrar la oportunidad de que un grandísimo congreso sobre memoria se ubique aquí porque es que estamos muy necesitados. No les quiero quitar más tiempo porque sé que, que, que ya, ya empieza esto con retraso. Solo agradecer otra vez a los organizadores que hayan traído eh, a la Universidad Complutense este magnífico congreso. Eh, desde el rectorado, la verdad es que estamos muy contentos eh, de haberle podido eh, dar cobijo y sin más, en nombre del rector y con mucho gusto por mi parte, queda instalado el evento. Muchas gracias. Good. Inauspicious beginning.